we're going to be talking about a specific framework for understanding games called MDA. Has anyone, do the Becker people know this or, or is this like a Northeastern thing that we just really, mechanics, dynamics, aesthetics? No? Okay, great. <laughs> so we get to, no. okay. So basically the idea behind MDA, mechanics, dynamics, aesthetics, is that game, uh, game play, it's, it's really focused on gameplay. It doesn't really deal with the other parts of games, but that gameplay can be thought of in three different ways. Mechanics, dynamics, and aesthetics. Mechanics are like the actual programming work you do. It's the data and the algorithms, as you can see there, um, that make up game. They're like the specific features you put in. Dynamics are kind of what mechanics are built up for. They're specific like gameplay play actions you do, uh, ways you play the game. So like the mechanics of the game, knocking over trash, following a path, spawning power-ups, and the field of view of the enemies. The dynamics kind of hiding in a corner to avoid the field of view or managing your power-up. So like you get a power-up, but an enemy is chasing you. So you go around and then pick it up to knock them out. And um, timing how you advance to players, to the enemies, and all of these things are kind of like dynamics. And then there's aesthetics, which uh, aesthetics can also be used in terms of like the art and the sound. But in this context, it's just the aesthetics of the gameplay, how it feels to play the game. Uh, and those are just like adjectives, words you describe. So for uh, Raccoon Revenge, excitement, tension, anticipation, sneakiness, which is probably the most important word, chaos and revenge are all words we kind of want to work in the feelings we want to invoke. Uh, and it, the role of the designer is to kind of manage all of these three things together and try to use mechanics to build up dynamics and aesthetics. Uh, the way we use it in this game, the way I've been using, is to decide when like the quality of the game design and when we finish parts of our game design. And you can, you can see the questions that you can use to answer like each of these things. So if you have a mechanic, you can ask, does this function? If your mechanic is knocking over trash cans and the trash cans aren't being knocked over, it's not working, and then you have to fix it to make sure that mechanic's in place. Whereas dynamics is more about balance. Um, so like, uh, does knocking over the trash can make the, pa the player too powerful in the specific moment? Does the power up spawning make it too good? That's the kind of thing you want to check when you're working on dynamics. And then aesthetics, you're saying, is this fun? Does this feel good? Is this the feeling I want? Um, and that's all kind of what you have to manage. I also put the link to the paper this uh, framework is based on. Um, and also, so you can, this is a good way to think about games, especially from a game design standpoint. Uh, this is how like all the roles kind of do it. So programmers are mainly working the mechanics. They're implementing features where artists, writers, and sound designers, all these aesthetic people are making like the emotional core of the game. The job of the game designer is really to take mechanics and by using and tuning dynamics, make aesthetics. Whereas like UI designers, effect designers are taking aesthetic pieces, aesthetic artifacts, and then applying mechanical like functions to those aesthetic artifacts. It's kind of there. I also put this thing, if designers work on a mechanic, they're probably just going to be programming, but in a design context, or it's a lot about like choosing things. If they're working on a six, they're probably just writing, like communicating their ideas, which is a lot of game design. Game design is like 50% writing, if not more. And then if they're just working on dynamics, that's when they're really doing what we think of designing, like going into spreadsheets, typing up functions to get that really going or play testing games. That's all really dynamic work. Um, so this is just one framework uh, for game design. There's another one that I really like, uh, Game Feel, which is based on this book by Steve Swink. Uh, and that's really good for visual action games, which our game kind of fits into. It divides uh, games into seven categories about what it focuses on. And then it really focuses on how to make the best game that intersects in all of those categories. So like having a game that you play real time. So like the game updates as the player puts an input. Spatial simulation, things collide, things move as you expect them to and polish things. The game communicates what you're doing effectively. Uh, so this is also a really good framework for understanding game design. And it's one I kind of use generally. The one mass digi is using right now 
Uh, and the main one is the design pillars, which are the middle. This is our game canvas. This is kind of what we understand, like how we've, uh, like what we built in our brainstorming, in our all of our brainstorming, we kind of worked towards this to make this. And our design pillars are like just the ideas we want to focus on when we're designing. Pacing, challenge, key emotion, the key mechanic. And as if those things are good, and if we're liking those things, and they're all of the other things merge well, that's what we decide, okay, we've made a good game. Um, and you can also see on the side, there's comps here. Comps are really, really important because all of this design work is really hard. It's really hard to make a good game from scratch without any sort of like inspiration. In fact, maybe impossible, I don't really know. You try it out for yourself, it, it could be fun. <laughs> um, and so most games, have some inspiration from games already that they built. Some games uh, have some inspiration from games, but also a lot of games take things from the real world. That's where most new game genres come out from. So uh, we call these games, at least at MessDigi, comps, uh, comparisons, games we kind of can look at. So for our game, we have a lot of comps that all kind of fit their own different roles. So we have, uh, like Metal Gear and stealth games in general uh, have come into play, especially with how the enemies are reacted. Untitled Goose Game uh, is an emotional comp for, um, for us. We want a raccoon to feel the same way the goose does, same kind of chaotic enemy, kind of like fun villain you get to play destroying the, all the human stuff. And then Pac-Man is also like a thing for collecting the trash. You know, it's the same kind of running around a maze collecting stuff. So our goal of the game is to combine all of these game ideas into one game and find the connections between these. Because all of these games have similar things. They all have enemies, they all have some stealth, they all have avoiding enemies, and they all have collecting things, but they use it in different ways. And our game, we want to kind of combine those different ideas into one. There's also a core comp called Hunter Assassin, which is uh, what we kind of took the, like our main inspiration for the game and it's what we've brought in for most of our work. So like whenever I have a question about like, okay, how do I want this to feel? How do I want this to go? I go to my phone, play Hunter Assassin to see how they do it and then try to translate this into what we're doing. So Hunter Assassin's a bit slower than our game. It's a bit, has, it's more focused on like combat where we're more, fo more focused on collection. And that those are like conscious choices we've made looking at